Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? As you can see, I have my guest, Gracie, with me. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there's like these little glowing things going up. I wish Facebook will come up with some neat um, effects that you could do. Well, I'm sorry, I'm like five minutes late. I was... I just told Gracie, I said, I think I'm going to go on early. And then I had to go and do something. And by the time I got back, um, I am running late. And my other camera is behind. Like, when I do something, it's behind. Like a half a second. I don't know what to do about that. All right. Well, tonight we're going to do Psalms 43. Gracie's already had her bath, and she's just kind of like in sleep mode. She still kind of looks like she wants to attack me. Maybe she won't. I think she's pretty sleepy. All right, and then I wrote something day before yesterday. I haven't even done a song share for two days. I don't know where I've been. I've been taking allergy medicine. I think, I think my brain just kind of... I don't know, it checks out sometimes when I take certain allergy medicines. So, I will read to you what I wrote two days ago, which was on the 9th, which was Tuesday. I'll read that to you. I haven't been on here since Monday. Um, really tired on Tuesday. Wednesday, I went and did youth, but actually they went to Clifton, so I went, and then nobody stayed, so I came back home, and Thursday I was cooking dinner, and I just got caught cooking dinner, and it got really late, and then tonight I'm here, I'm here, I was playing my game though on my phone, and I was doing really well on my phone, on my game, but that's okay, I'll do it again later. Get back in here and do a little riding of my seven miles on my cycles, my little pedals. I don't even have an exercise bike anymore. I just have pedals that go and go and go and go. And I do seven miles on that. Okay, well, tonight we're going to do Psalm 43. And um, this camera is driving me crazy that's behind. I don't know whether to restart it. It usually doesn't do that. I guess we'll just leave it tonight. Feels like a lot of time. All right, well, let's go ahead and pray. I hope you had an awesome Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. We are doing a an outreach in my church town. Not the town I live in, but the town I go to church in, which is my old hometown that I grew up in, graduated from and everything. We are going to do ultimate Frisbee football, and I think it's going to be fun for the kids. So that's what we're doing tomorrow, and um, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. So let's pray, and I'm going to pray about that too, that all of that falls into place perfectly. God, we just come to you, and we thank you, God, that you are on your throne, and you are in control, God. There is no God like you. God, you are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. You are from everlasting to everlasting, God. You have always been, and you will always be. Thank you for being our a creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge, God, and just so much more. You are so much more, God. God, we just uh, we thank you that you're magnificent and powerful and mighty. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness, not according to the world's truth, but according to your truth and your word. And God, we just praise you because you are caring and loving and kind and compassionate. And you are faithful and you are trustworthy. And you are patient. You want none to perish. 
Thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we just pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for... Um, we pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray that they would return to you, that they would repent, that they would be reconciled. God, we just pray that we would re-surrender to you every day, that we would just surrender our lives to you and to what you want to do in our lives. God, we just pray for all the disasters that are going on. We just pray, God, that you would meet these people's needs. We pray for Sean Fute and... Um, let us worship, hold the line movement that's in Iraq right now, ministering to the widows and the children from the Iraq war. God, we pray for safety and we pray for success and sharing the love of Jesus with them, sharing the compassion, sharing the, the uh, hands and feet of Jesus with them. God, we just pray for all the disasters that people's needs would be met, God that um, people would be drawn to you, that they would feel your presence, God, that you would send them the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus to tend to their needs. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We lift up the fair family to you and, and the other families that are, are um, in this family. And we lift up the Mitchell family also, God. We just pray for these families. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them, God, that they would feel your presence. And God, we pray for all these um, young people that died last Friday night. Just going to a concert, God. Nine of them did not return home to their families. And God, we just pray for these families. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength, God, for them. And we pray for peace, comfort, and healing for the ones that did survive, God, and, and the memories, the traumatization that they are going through every day, God. We just pray that you would be with them and that you would replace those memories with better memories, God. God, we pray for all the people that are sick. We just pray, God, that you would heal their bodies. We pray for the ones from Houston also that are still in the hospital for healing, God. And we pray for um, that their families would feel your presence, God, and that you would give them all strength. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we'll pray and share warriors. My grace is she got us turned off. She didn't want to stay. She's been sleeping in the seat of this chair for the past couple of days. And so she's probably a little put out because I'm in it. So when I come back and do my exercise later, she will come and she will get in this chair and go to sleep. Okay, so this is what Psalm 43 has to tell us. It says, prayer to God in time of trouble. Well, that fits exactly with what I want to read to you. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and read this psalm first. I'm sorry. And I have a little... <clears throat> allergy thing going on. All right. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against any ungodly nation. Wow. That's like where we are now. A nation in, in many areas is very ungodly. You know, deliver me from the deceitful and the unjust man, for you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill. 
into your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So again, praying to God in times of trouble. Of course, there is no study part to this. But I'm just going to summarize it. This, this person also, this psalmist also, <clears throat> felt like an ungodly nation was against him. And that there were deceitful and unjust men around him. But he proclaimed that God is his strength. And it says, why do you cast me off? Why does he feel like God is not with him at times? You know, sometimes we feel like God is not with us. We feel like we are alone in whatever we're going through. And it's just not true. God is always there. He always is there. And when we feel alone, a lot of times we have stepped away from him. He didn't step away from us. We stepped away from him. So it says, send out your light and your truth and let them lead me. He wants to be led by God's light and truth. And he wants to go to God's tabernacle. He wants to go to the altar of God. And um, he said that God is his exceeding joy. And on the harp, he will praise God. But his soul is still cast down. But his hope is in God. Or he will praise him. And God will help his countenance. The help of my countenance. God will help his countenance. countenance and God is his God. It's just like us. We go through, we go through times when... We are looking for help. It's just, where is the help? I don't know where the help is. We feel sad. We feel alone. But God is always there. We have to reach out to him sometimes. And we walk away. Sometimes this psalmist might have walked away from God, and that might be why he didn't feel that closeness. In order for us to feel the closeness all the time, we need to stay in God's word. We need to be praying. We need to be praising. Now, I've spent a lot of time listening to the testimonies of these young people from Houston, and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because they had no idea what they were going to. They just thought they were going to have fun with their friends. You know how many times I've gone to concerts and that's all I was going for was to have fun with my friends. And we didn't, we didn't end up like that. Praise God. We could have. We went with thousands and thousands of people. I've been with over 130,000 people in the AT&T Stadium. But nothing bad happened because we weren't all just jammed in together and all just... I mean, they put barricades around these people. There was no escape. There was no escape. And the ones that were asking security to help them get out, they go, oh, y'all are fine. But yet they were being pushed up against the barricades and breaking ribs and all kinds of bad stuff. A concert should not be that way. It was very poorly planned. I've been to numerous Christian concerts 
and I have been to rock concerts, and I've been to country concerts, and I've never experienced anything like that. Many, many of these young people said that they felt like they were in hell. They couldn't breathe. It was hot. Everybody was pushed up against everybody. There was no way out. You couldn't go to the sides. You couldn't go to the back because there was just a sea of people behind you that were pushing you forward. Um, it's just sad. And I pray that things change and I pray that that never happens again. Because it's so sad for these families and these friends that will never see their loved one here. I mean, if they're going to heaven, they'll see them there, but it's just sad. So just please pray for these people. There's a young man that's nine that's in a coma in the hospital. Just pray for healing for him. There was another girl that was brain dead. She's 22, and she they declared her dead. But she gave one last miracle. She donated all of her organs to people that needed them. That's admirable at 22, wanting to be an organ donor. That's admirable. Okay. Well, let's read what I wrote two days ago on Facebook. Noticed I had 81 little notifications on Facebook. I don't know whether I'll go through all those or not. Sometimes that just takes too long. Okay, so the song that I shared is by Toby Mac. And it's a it's called Help Is On The Way. And so I did some research about what he was thinking when he wrote this song and this was after his son had passed away and so um i think a lot of it was about that but i saw some things too in the video that were just very symbolic to me in a good way not in a bad way to um how we feel sometimes and that help is always there you know just like what we talked about a lot of times we do feel distant from God. It's usually not him that's moved. It's us. But I just, I love this song. I hear it just nearly every day. I start my day with it. I said, wow, this song and message in video by Toby, by Toby Mac. This song is so powerful and the lyrics remind us that help is on the way. God's help is always on time and perfectly timed too. Every time I watch this video and hear these lyrics, the Holy Spirit shows me something new. This is so packed with so much about being the prodigal son or daughter, the constant running that we do at times from God instead of to him, the darkness and the shadows around us, 99 on the attendance board that changes to 100, when the young man walks in at the end. Toby Mack himself was suffering the loss of his oldest son, too, when he wrote this song. So I see the symbolism of maybe the young man being the symbol of his son, too. What does this song say to you in this video? These are the things that stand out to me, but the message is that God will always be there to help in our time of need. He often sends brothers and sisters in Christ as our help, but help is always on the way. Be encouraged. God sees your pain, and he cares deeply for you. He sees your sorrow. He knows your body is sick. He knows your heart is broken. He knows all the things you have done in secret. He will forgive you. He and is coming to help you no matter how many times he has helped you before. Reach out to him for help. Where is my little thing? Reach out to him for help. He is patiently waiting on you. 
take his hand and follow him for help. He is, take his hand and follow him. Help is on the way. Reach out today. Share your heart with him. Come back now. I really think this is a prodigal call. I really feel like God is reaching out to his children. Many of his children are right there with him. But many of his children have strayed. And I believe he is through everything that we're going through. He is pulling people back to him. Slowly. Slowly he's pulling people back to him. So is Jesus your savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven in forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. And really my plan was to share all this with you last night, but I didn't do that. So maybe somebody wasn't here last night that is here tonight that needs this message, that needs to know that God sees you where you are. He sees everything that you do. But he still will forgive you. He will still send you help if you need help. So don't, don't think that he's turned his back on you because he hasn't. I feel like somebody needs to hear that. God has not turned his back on you. God loves you. God wants you to come back to him. He wants you to repent. He wants to reconcile your relationship. Remember the relationship that you once had with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And you can have that again. Maybe better than before. Maybe stronger than before. Maybe you've learned some things while you strayed away that you didn't know. It's, it's no coincidence that tonight I have reckless love on. So the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I love that song. I need to laugh. love it too. It's no coincidence that I have this on. No coincidence at all. Because God's love is reckless and he does love us. Above all things, he loves us above creation. The things that he created, he loves us more. He loves us. So please, please return. Return while you can. His time is running out. It really is. It is running out. And we need to be ready for Jesus because God is going to send Jesus in his perfect timing. We need to be ready. So if you're not saved, you need to be saved. If you have strayed so far away that you wonder if your relationship was ever good with God or not, rededicate your life. Come back. Okay, I'm going to do the E-band tonight. I really like the E-band message. It's easy to read. It's big enough letters that I can read it. Some of these small things are just getting too small for me to read. I think my right eye is not as sharp as my left eye. And we have the color gold. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, Romans 1.16. The gold color represents God, the creator of all, who lives in heaven. The 
Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. The first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? So how can our sins be removed? The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for our sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So next we have the white with the red question mark. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash away our sins? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So if you would like to do that tonight, if you are not saved, if you would like to be saved tonight, you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, this is the most important decision of your life, and it is the decision that determines where you spend eternity. So if you would like, then repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So here are some more symbols. We have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. And the next one is, read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And the next symbol is the little praying man. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. The next one is the drop of water. 
When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. So here's the fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his Son. So again, like the symbol said, read your Bible every day, pray, and praise. I used to listen to praise music in here, but I cannot remember to bring it in here to listen to. So, sometimes I have a praise song in my head, though, and that, that's helpful. All right, well, it is time to do the blessing from God and for me to get off of here. Go take care of my child. I already ate dinner, but I need to go feed him. Um... The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord and be gracious to you. <laughs> Sorry. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh my. I've been taking too much allergy medicine. Anyway, that is a blessing from God in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Is a blessing from him. But it's time to pray again. Do you have any prayer requests? Do put them in the comments. If you have any comments, do put them in the comments. My name is Charm. I don't always um, introduce myself. I'm going to try to start remembering to do that. My, my name is Charm, and this is my ministry. My ministry is to share God's truth and the gospel of Jesus. Those are my ministry things. That's what I want to do. I want to share God's truths out of his word. Not my truths, because I don't have any truths. Only God's truths and the gospel of Jesus. So let's pray. I hope you have an awesome Saturday. I'm going to be kind of busy tomorrow. I should be here tomorrow night. Uh, it depends on how long it takes to do what we're doing tomorrow. Anyway, I'm supposed to go somewhere tomorrow night. I don't know whether I'm going or not. I had a really, really bad headache on Tuesday. And um, I just don't want to be outside around all the stuff that's blowing around. Because I think that was part of it. I think it was an allergy, uh, sinus pressure headache that was right above my right eye. And it was so painful. And um, that's why I didn't do this on, I was sick to my stomach. I, I took some ibuprofen and I made myself sick to my stomach. And I was sick for like an hour until I remembered to just eat some crackers. And that helped a lot. But anyway, I don't want to be too far from home with one of those headaches. I was like, I just couldn't think. So anyway, let me pray for us. God, thank you for this time that we can come and we can learn more about your word, God, for reminding us that your help is always on the way, that we are the ones that walk away. You never walk away from us. And you are always waiting right where we left you, God. And you are willing to forgive us and to reconcile that relationship and make it new over and over again, God. You, are, you love us that much that you will 
take us back over and over again. God, we just thank you for your word and we thank you for sending Jesus to die for us, to offer to us eternal life through salvation in him. God, we just pray for truth to rise above all the lies that we hear. We pray for an army of people that will stand for your truth. We pray for you to give us the boldness to be that army, God. We pray for you to give us the boldness to go out and share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus everywhere we go, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to be the love and compassion of Jesus to others. God, thank you so much for all the many things that you do. Please continue to protect us, continue to provide for us and bless us, God. Lead and guide us every day. Order our steps every day, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share, warriors, I have got to get off of here. But it has been great to come on here and to read God's word, open God's word up with you. And I hope that Maybe somebody needed this message from this song, and please go and listen to it. That's why I share these songs, and so people can go and listen to them, and they can watch the video, and leave in the comments what the video says to you, and the words say to you, but I believe a lot of it is about being a prodigal son or daughter, and coming back, coming back, and fleeing fleeing from the dark things in our lives. All right. Well, I have got to go. I hope you have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.